Hi, Caviar Dreamers. Hi, Caviar Dreamers. We, um, I just want everyone to know, we pre-recorded what is going on today, Jonathan Mark Medium, but it's super important that Lexi and I yeah. comment on everything that has been going on this week. We have to have our own like little mini episode before this episode airs because the world is in a state of disaster. As far as I'm concerned, the nation, I should say, the nation is in a state of disaster. Yeah, I think this is, was literally the perfect storm at a time when everyone was already at stay-at-home orders. Um, it couldn't have come at a worse time. People were already feeling isolated, vulnerable, afraid. Mm -hmm. The economy is rough. And then to have such an awful injustice that we all witnessed be handled so wrong like th th there's no words for it and I think also um, it's so hard to, to speak because you want to say things the right way and and this was just it, this really was the perfect storm it was and there's no right way to say it. um George Floyd was murdered in front of the world by the most horrific disgusting people horrible police officers um and it took way too long it took way too long for anyone to, to respond and press charges for them to be arrested um protesters are unfortunately arrested much quicker than yes you know police that are involved in horrible acts of brutality and i think we're a nation very divided right now and it's very scary and very mm -hmm. sad and every you know and everybody looks to the president and i just want to say this yes am i a liberal girl absolutely did I want the president to fail? No. The left does not want the right to fail. The right does not want the left to fail. Yes, they argue all the time, constantly. But everybody wants the nation to succeed, okay? So you're going to look to your president yes. to bring the people together. And lead you. And lead you to a good, to place. A good place. We need to, we need to be united when, when a tragedy like this happens and it, there's a social injustice on any level. And this is a pressure cooker. And there's been so many social injustices against the black community. Mm -hmm. and, and there's social injustice against a lot of community, but the black community has been marginalized for so long that we have to stand up. So, of course, the March has posted Black Lives Matter. I did a whole George Floyd post. Um, I had people unfollow me. I had people say they're not going to follow me. I'm falling into stuff. I'm a sheep. I'm a this. No, I'm going to tell you why black lives matter. And you can't say all lives matter. No. The majority of people are white. It's a fact. 75% of America is white. It's just, it's the census. I looked it up just to make sure I'm not hallucinating. Okay. So most of America is white. The black community needs us, the majority to stand up and be their ally. We're not saying all lives don't matter, but right now, Black Lives Matter because their house is on fire. If your house isn't on fire, which the white community's house is not on fire, the black community's house is on fire. It has been on fucking fire, by the way, for a long time. And we need to stand up and be their ally. The black community's ally, they need, they need the white community to gather together for us all to help them and speak up and stand with them. I think also in this country, we went from one way to the other. We try to say, you know, we don't see color. No, we should see color. And okay. we should celebrate color. We should say, that's incredible that you are black. That's amazing that you're Hispanic. That's amazing that you're Asian. It's everyone is amazing. And we should look at humanity as a whole, be good people, be kind. Um, mm -hmm. And, you know, right now the black community is very, 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 very vulnerable. And it's very important that we stand up and use our voices. You know, the, voice the majority's the voice. The, the, yes. And which is not a derogatory I'm thing. not looking at the derogatory thing. I'm going to tell you why. Why, why white people approach and and I never even thought of it that way by the way and people had to point out to me and there's nothing wrong with learning as we get older yeah. and, and to teach our kids and and I don't take offense to anything I mean everyone's so fucking sensitive which drives me crazy yeah you know what everybody can learn everybody people can change as long as you apologize for your mistakes your people could say things along the way that doesn't mean you're racist you know it's so it's okay. Well, you would hope that the majority of people could change. You would yes, that, you because know. if they can't, why why are we having these protests and, and, and riots if, if we don't believe people can change? Because they can, and, and 
And now we live in a very transparent time. Social media especially mm -hmm. has to hold us very accountable. And yes, people have made mistakes for a long time and people will always make mistakes, but it's about raising awareness holding them to a standard, uh -huh. teaching them the right way, and then allowing them to change. Allowing them to change, not berating them for the right, if they want, if they're gonna change, and they're and they're not just doing it because they've been shamed into it, if they really want to change. Yeah, it was like, like you're a piece of shit, then you're gonna get berated for forever. Yeah, exactly. Because and you deserve it. Exactly, but I'm just gonna give you an example of white, white privilege. I'm never afraid if I'm uh, stuck by a cop, okay? My license was expired. Uh, and my car wasn't registered. Thank you, Joe Panigna. I was pulled over. Didn't face me. I was like pulled over um, in New Jersey. I'm not gonna say what town because I, you know. <laughs> okay, I'll just say Fortly. Uh, was I nervous? I was like, shit, da, da, da. I need to call my husband. My husband didn't register the car. Did they confiscate my car? No. Did they make me go home? Did they arrest me? Did they do anything? No. I took my way right out of it. You know what? I'm a middle-aged white woman, so kind of cute some days, and it was not a big deal. Now, that didn't cross my mind because I was white, but now, of course, it does cross my mind. When I hear, you know, this lovely boy who wrote to me said, they're afraid to be stopped by the police. And you know what? That's right. That's a white privilege. A middle-aged white woman, they're not going to do something to. And, and that's not right. Well, well it is, you know what I mean? It's not right that they're going to do something to a black person. It's sick. It's sick. It's fucked up. So, of course, that is the privilege of being white. That's what they mean by white privilege. It's not a derogatory comment. It's a fact, okay? I'm sorry, it's a fact. And I can't imagine the poor moms, you know, oh. we're, we're all mothers. And, you know, I don't talk about all my children between, you know, I've only spoken about the two that don't, you know, that aren't speaking me who are much older. My son, my natural born son's 23. We have Joe's two kids. I, I mean, my son, I'm very, very close with. I'm an erotic wreck. You know, the most vulnerable thing is to be a mother. The fears, I, I thought nothing could be more vulnerable than what you and I uh, have, baby, you know. This whole thing is brought so to my attention, like reading the stories of moms and what they've had to go through with mm -hmm. white sons. I feel like I couldn't they're, feel more the vulnerable. Black, the black mom, their level of vulnerability is, is a step above what I've had. I, I never worry about possible. my son getting pulled over by the police. He's been pulled over by the police. His license, he's another one. License expired. We're, we're bad people that way. <laughs> Nothing happens to him. He lives in the South. He's not, he, he's not an erotic wreck. He, he's, this is terrible. He, he jogs in a hoodie. Yeah, we're, we're, I'm not worried about him with things like that, with the, with the police. And, and it's, it's a different thing. And I, and I just want people to understand that. And, and, to ha and people who can have a voice and have a platform to speak out and to be an ally. And it's not about, you know, the, the Democratic Party and the Republican Party, because everyone's like, why, you know, you're talking about Trump. I don't give a fuck about him, okay? I, I really don't. I give a, a, a shit about humanity and, and people so and bringing, it's a human issue, okay? And now especially, this is Pride Month now, we're in June. Yeah, diversity is so important mm -hmm. in this. He's beautiful. It's incredible. It's what it makes the world go round. Yes, it's a colorful world. I mean, I don't want to be mean, but if everybody was so homogenous, how fucking boring this place is. Boring as shit. Boring. So this is the time that we call to everyone at Caviar Dreamers to use their voices, use their platforms, be aware of what's going on in the community, donate, sign petitions, do whatever you yes, can do. There's so many resources. Learn, and, and educate listen. yourself. And because someone didn't post something, and everyone's on, so, you know, if it's some of your friends, they didn't post something, well, I hope they're donating. You know, everybody doesn't have a big voice, and it sometimes takes time for them to do it. I've also, always been very outspoken. If they're not posting, don't be like, what a shithead, that fucker didn't post. Call them and say, hey, I noticed you didn't post something. Is, do you not understand something? Is there something? Yeah, teach them. Have teach them. And have acceptance. This is a time to teach. I yes. know I've learned a lot at this time. You know, I always, Me too. Me I too. always knew I was never racist. I am not, you know, I have no mean bones in my body towards any color, creed, race, sexuality, culture. I am free love, open, open. Me too. Me but too. Up up I and yes. And, and I feel like, and same thing, I can still learn. And I, and I want to learn. And I want to teach people the right way. And, and do I lose patience with some people when they say crazy, stupid things? Of course. But I'm, I'm constantly trying to learn more, teach more. I'm very, I'm very blessed. We both live in an extremely diverse community. Englewood, New Jersey is very, very diverse. 
Um, it's 30% um, black, it's 30% white, it's 24% um, Latina, yeah. and uh, the rest, um, you know, is mixed, is mixed ethnicities and races. And it's a beautiful community. There is a big social divide, though. One glaring. glaring social divide. One side of the town is very white and Jewish. Um, one side of the town is is very black. It's it's actually across the train tracks, which is so weird. Um, but we all try and unite and do things together. We have an amazing mayor, Michael Wilds. I am extremely involved in the community, which I've been for yeah. a bit, a very long time. And. It's it's same thing with the school. You know, people choose to send their kids to private school. I mean, my kids, we had lived in Town of Light at the time I wasn't in Englewood. Um, so we're doing everything to pump up the community. And now especially. And also, you know, the term, the other side of the tracks. This was something I had heard the term systemic yeah. racism. And that's, now and that's a learned. systemic racist it's term, the other side of the tracks. It is, and and how crazy is that? It actually it, is in my own town. Racism. And that's a systemic racist term. I learned something. I don't know if you guys have seen that thing on Instagram. We're talking about that. It's, that and it's so great. well. It's so well done. And, it, it, and little kids can understand also. Yeah, it's Jamal. Shows it shows how Jamal and was the, I don't Kevin. know. Kevin. And how systemic racism. And actually, they had town maps of where people lived. And they were redlined. And how people could get bank loans. Yeah. And how black people could never get ahead from years and years. So this is generational. That's what systemic racism is. It's systemic racism. So when I'm saying the other side of the church, that was set up years ago. Generations, generations that black people lived in one area and white people lived in another area. And it's still going on today. And if we're looking to someone to lead us, it's not happening right now. We have to lead each other and lead by example. Exactly. Lead by example. And and I hope I hope I make you guys happy, proud. If I make a mistake, um, you can call me out. Don't scream and curse at me. <laughs> if we make a mistake, you're going to tell us. You're going to tell, tell us? us from yes. And, I, and so with that being said, we also want to make a commitment um, on caveat yes. to show diversity. Yes. Um, and to share as many stories from as many different backgrounds, cultures, um, you know, areas as we can to show people's dreams. So, you know, if you want to be on our podcast, then reach out to us. Yes, want reach to out. Hear yes, so I want to hear about everybody's business. And also we're going to be doing um, a lot of mentoring. So if there's someone we're having on, we're going to be telling you our guests in advance. And then someone who has a dream or wants to meet that person or ask advice on that person, yes, so the, the dreamer can connect with the entrepreneur. Absolutely. And you <laughs> Disrupt or leader, whoever that person may be. Yep, and you can DM us. We're going to release a list of who's coming on, so you can mm -hmm. DM us, and we're going to be connecting, um, like, people who want to be production, we're producers, we're going to be connecting um, people who want to be in the medical field, with medicine professionals, so it's it's going to be really great, um, and I think it's going to be so fun, we're going to get to meet extra fabulous people. Yes, which I'm super excited about. So today's episode is an amazing guy, Jonathan Mark Medium. You're going to see another intro to him. He's he's a young um, psychic medium, very very interesting, and we thought it was a poignant um, spiritual podcast to have on today. And interesting, a white supremacy story comes up mm -hmm. that he uh, will tell you about. So please listen. Um, I hope you enjoyed today's episode. I hope you enjoyed our chat. Yeah, and I hope that we can always be committed to making the podcast space, the better space, as well as the world, the better place. Yes. And also look up voting. Voting is very important. This yes. primary is going on right yeah. now. Vote. It's getting kind of overshadowed, so please vote. use your vote. And if you sign petitions, signing petitions are free. Sign petitions. Donate where you can. Make change where you can. Um, learn where you can. And communicate. And, and communicate and have, and have a voice. And just be the best person that you could possibly be, and, and love one another, and that's and that's what we have to say. And just and just keep learning, keep learning. So okay. here's Jonathan. Here's Jonathan. Well, hello, caviar dreamers. Hello, caviar dreamers. So excited for today's episode. I dressed up for it. You did. You look very in theme, Gypsy Rose Link. I know. Well, listen, we have a, a medium on today, yes. Jonathan Mark, who's amazing. I mean, granted, you know. I look like a gypsy, but this was like the old school um, psychic mediums. Yeah, I absolutely love that. Jonathan, you're going to see when he comes on. You think of a medium as being maybe someone eccentric with a crystal ball 
a head scarf, a head maybe. scarf over Satin the top, rooms, you know, velvet blazer or whatever. And Jonathan is literally like a hot young guy from Long Island in his kick hoodies, his like, you know, little street wear, yes, little ad- baseball caps. Like. Very adorable young guy. But listen, Hungarians were known to be gypsies and, you know, reading. Pop. You are living that gypsy so, Hungarian listen, I life. also want to just say, people always say like, gypsies and insult and insult. In my era, Hungarians were known to do that. Um, I mean it in a way of just like a fortune teller. No one write to me, that's inappropriate, Marge. You know what? I can't be politically correct all the time. I'm just saying I mean it in a loving way because Hungarian gypsy, that was a big thing. Okay? And I don't take it as a freaking <laughs> insult. Okay? No. Because no, where no, my no. mother was, the part of Hungary <laughs> she was from, not that part, uh, Sangotard, but another part where my father was from, there was a lot of, you know, there was a lot of Hungarian gypsies and, you know, not a big deal. You know, Marshka, yeah, I don't take it as an offense. Maybe some people will, but, you know, this Hungarian does not. Okay, good. I like that. I mean, we have a lot of gypsies where I'm from. But it's not Listen, my big fat gypsy gypsies. wedding. It was my big fat gypsy wedding. And you know what? I like it. I think it's very glamorous, sexy, and it's gypsy boho chic. I'm all about it. I mean, not that I look so sexy right now. I kind of look like shit, but you look it's fine. I, I like this. Up. I really like gypsies, this Gypsies, trans, thieves, share. I mean, I feel like I constantly have to defend myself because I'm always sticking my foot in my mouth. No, Gypsy Chic has been something that yeah, I've always exactly. gone for. Boho vibes, fringe. I find it sexy and fabulous. Stevie I mean Nicks. it. Stevie Nicks. I mean yeah. it in a complimentary way. Yeah, I don't think people are going to take offense to that. You never know, fucking know. But if they do, I'm sure they will let us know. Yes, please. So I think with that said, we should just get Jonathan in here and yes. hear about his gift. Because yes. you guys are really going to... The accuracy when he read us was not even, I, I mean, I, I can't even, I still get chills from it and I called my mom and freaked her out. Yes. By the way, I just want you to know when he read me, it wasn't stuff that's about me on the internet, mm-hmm. anything that's come out on the show. I don't really talk about my grandparents. No one knows about Marge Singer's parents, um, how they passed away, how anything happened, any deep sort of details. I keep some things private mm-hmm. and he knew shit. Ooh, I can slurm my words there. Did I have a cop shot? Yeah. He knew shit that, no, he knew shit that no one knows. And by the way, I'm probably slurring my words a little because I'm still getting used to my veneers. I'm not used to this many <laughs> fucking teeth in my mouth. They look no, so I think good they look though. really good. They do. That's why I'm um, drinking my coffee through a straw because I don't yeah. want to stain my uh, And I haven't done the bottoms yet. Though they match okay, the bottoms need to be bleached, I think. And they look good. Uh, thank you, Dr. Appa. Okay, love you guys, and we're going next. Let's get done. Jonathan's coming on. Thank you, Jonathan. I am so excited that you are here. Thank you so much for having me. I really appreciate it. I mean, the youngest, most fabulous medium ever. Beyond fabulous. I mean, yeah. when you did my reading, I, I couldn't even, I mean, I get chills just thinking about it. It was very emotional and very amazing. Yes. Oh, when you read, so I was so, you knew nothing about like, cause I never speak about my grandparents no one. You can't look that up on the internet. You knew so many things which, you know, I discussed in our, um, you know, the beginning of our podcast before you came on. I was telling everybody how amazing you are. Well, thank so, you. I, I mean, I dressed up for you. I did my um, Gypsies Tramps and Thieves <laughs> look. You know, we were, I, you know, this Love was it. part of the wagon on a traveling show. And we just, <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, yeah. So that was, no, but in all seriousness, you know, let's see, ask Jonathan that question, because yes, I think a lot of people don't know this. It's, yeah, I think people get very confused. Just tell, tell everyone the difference between, like, a psychic, a medium. Yeah, so a psychic is someone, I guess, that focuses on just, like, the future and stuff. So they'll focus on, like, for example, like, a relationship or career growth and stuff. And what I do as a medium is I connect to people that have passed away so I will connect to friends, family, whoever that comes through, through like validation. And when I do the psychic stuff, I need to use someone that has passed away within your family because they need to give me the information. Like I'll just never just say like, oh, I see your career going well for you. Like if people be like, okay, cool. Like when, with what, who? So the biggest difference is a psychic will only focus so much on the future as a medium will focus more on past. So like people that passed away. Oh, I see. I see. So I, I like that. I like that clarity. So tell everybody, cause I love your story. How do you realize you have these medium powers? Because it's just like, you know, how does this come to you? How do you know? Yeah. So at a very young age, my mom's sister passed away 
So I was about six months old when she passed away. And from a very young age, I'd be saying like, you know, and her name was Susan. So I'd be like, and Sue's here. My family would be like, that's cute. You probably see pictures of her throughout the house. You definitely hear us talking about her because it was so like tragic. And so my mom's like, all right, that's cool. So I never knew this until I got like interviewed until I was telling you guys, I was driving with my mom when I was about three years old ish. And, um, my mom's driving and I turn to my mom and I'm like, yeah, Aunt Sue says, thank you for thinking of her right now. My mom like turned to me and she's like, how the hell did you know that? Like, is that a coincidence? She's like, I don't know. So we kind of continue to go as I turned about five or six, we had like a family party around Easter actually. And I walked up to like a group of people in my mom's family. And I was like, Aunt Sue says, thank you for burying her in your jean jacket. She's really comfortable. And my mom like turned white, like a ghost. Like I've never like, and then she was like, all right, you really got to stop like talking about this. So I'm from Long Island. So my backyard's like woodsy and stuff. So I was pushing a swing set and my mom's like, so what are you doing? You have an imaginary friend like a kid would have. And I guess I got very passionate and I was like, no, it's little Anthony. It's little Anthony. And my mom is like, hmm. cool. like, I don't really know. So it just so happens that the house that I guess my parents bought, the people were coming over to pick up like mail or things along the lines like that. And my mom's like, yeah, I'm just wondering, like, what's the history of the house? Like, anything we should know? And the guy's like, yeah, like, a kid, Anthony, passed away in your backyard. Um, he stepped on Ingram's bee's nest, and he was swollen, and he passed away, like, kind of on site. Like, right, she goes right where your swing set is. Mm-hmm. And my mom was, my mom, like, turned to me, and she's like, you got to stop speaking about this. So as I got <laughs> older, like, I kind of realized. And then realized, she's you for an exorcism. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. Like, that holy water and stuff. But um, she was like, she she kind of was like, you gotta stop speaking about it. And as I got older, I realized like what I'm seeing, feeling, and all that. Not everybody is. And I wanted to be normal. Like I wanted to go out, have fun, mm-hmm. play sports. And so as I was older, I was going off to college, and I turned to my mom and I said, "Is there any mental illness in our family?" My mom's like, "No, why?" I thought I was schizophrenic because like it kept coming and it was becoming more, I guess, like strong, more clear and stuff. So then I, my mom was seeing a medium because of her sister and she never really believed in it until like things happened in her, I guess, experiences. And the medium's like, he could be crazy. I have no idea. You have to bring him in. She's like, I literally have no idea. So I came back from school and uh, I walk in and she's like, holy crap, I've never seen someone this young, this gifted. So she trained me or like helped me kind of see and interpret what I'm seeing because I didn't really know. It's like learning a new language. I just had no idea. And I caught up to her very quickly. And then eventually it just started like people started coming to me. My mom would bring friends from work and then their friends and kind of just grew and grew. And then I started helping out with like law enforcement and I started going to L.A. to do all that stuff. So it's a pretty long story, I know. So. No, it's no, so but it's so interesting because a, you're, you're you are so young. This is a gift, you know. Yeah. People are always suspicious. I've always been into it. Me too. Because right. I always feel it. I always feel like there's a connection. I'm very yeah. obsessed. Kate Casey, who has a a popular podcast. Yeah introduced yeah. me to you which was so nice yep. you gifted you to me and then i gifted you yeah. to lexi yeah. and obviously i've had you know mediums and psychics before that i don't believe in that have you know just right. some random stupid mm-hmm. shit you got so specific you the names and just little things that you knew that that no one else would know that's not on the internet because listen there's a lot of stuff about, about me out there yeah um you don't watch the show <laughs> you know and that people have no idea that i've never told anybody about my grandparents and about certain things that that you knew that were that was so amazing um you're also on the hills yeah i've been doing now, a couple tell of us about, about that me. yeah so i first i read audrina who's on the hills and we became very Um, close and then Heidi and Spencer wanted a reading and then I read them and then before this whole COVID crisis started I went to Audrina's to do like they kind of were doing a housewarming that was being filmed so that was filmed with me there and then I'm now written into I guess a script or whatever you want to call it like like a timeline with like Heidi and Spencer and all these people on the hills now but that's not going to pick up until like July like they're saying like filming's not going to resume until like the summer so, so you'll be like a regular cast member of the Hills. I don't think a regular. I think I'd be like a reoccurring guest. Is the best a reoccurring way. guest. But that's, yeah. that's great. That's, yeah. That's 
cool. It's very cool. Very excited. And, and you've been doing a lot of things during, you know, this pandemic, this crisis. You've been you've been doing a lot of readings. Tell us about that. Yeah, so I've been doing a lot of readings for a bunch of different uh, people, like from, and I hate using this word, but like my normal clients to like celebrity clients. I've been doing a lot of podcasts. And I, I think the craziest thing about like what happened with one of my podcasts was recently I said something, uh, it was on Jay McCarthy's show and then like one of her co-hosts who has her own podcast and I was on her podcast and I said to her, uh, I think it was mid-March, I said like April 24th, things are going to start to relieve and like states are going to open up. And then April 24th, like Georgia, Oklahoma, all these states started to open up. And then she like reached out to me like the other day and she's like, yo, like this is insane. I would never believe this if I like, if I never like had it on my podcast and whatever. So I've been doing a lot of stuff like that for people because a lot of people are really concerned with like the COVID and people are, are like losing a lot of loved ones. So I want to be able to help them. So I've been like ramping up what I'm doing to help as many people in the health field to law enforcement to and anyone. So no, which is, you know, which is so amazing. And you work a lot with the police. I do. I do a lot of like cases for them. I do cold cases to like corporate cases to like everything just to help out, like just to help them like turn a corner in something or just to solve it completely. And do you solve a lot of cases? Like, like, you know, miss, what is it? Missing people, murders, hotel. Yeah. Yeah. So there's some, like, I can't like, speak about but oh yeah of course yeah you, you don't have to do that but is it like yeah. murders what yeah, is so, missing people so, yeah so i've done a, a, a couple like i could talk about the missing person and like a corporate case but like yeah i've done like the murder stuff and um a really big case that's going on right now currently Ooh. on Long island Ooh. and stuff yeah that's gonna be on netflix like they're doing a documentary amazing on wow yeah like it's gonna be pretty big and um yeah so i, I kind of help them like a lot of them don't believe it a lot of them at first they want a reading from me and then see what I can do and then ask me. And then I guess I read like a Sergeant who's high up and then I read him. He loved it. And then he kind of brought me in. He's like, can you do this? And then I've been helping him and them out ever since. So it's been pretty cool. That's awesome. That is awesome. Now, let me just ask you, what yeah. is, you don't have to say names. Yeah, I, mean, yeah. I want to hear like a crazy story. Like, like what's like one, like, you like, holy shit, like, like secrets get revealed, obviously, yes. when people come right. I day. have a good one. I had yeah, tell us a good one. one. I love a juicy All right. story. All right. So I had like a group-ish type of reading. So it was three, pe three to four people. Mm -hmm. And I always ask them, I'm like, are you guys close enough? So if I say something that's like very personal, are you guys mm -hmm. going to be like, okay. Majority of the time they all say yes. There was this one time, it, there was a boy, a girl, an aunt, and uh, I, I think a friend of the aunt. And the boy sitting there, he must be about 20 years old. And I'm seeing some really messed up things around him. And I never do this. I, t I tap him. I go, let's go to another room right now. Woo! And he goes, why? I go, just come here. So Are we go sleeping with sheep? Like, what was that? <laughs> <laughs> oh no, no, it gets weird. So I, said, so I said to him, I was like, listen, I, I saw something. I go, are you a white supremacist? And he, goes, <gasps> and he goes, what? And I go, are you a white supremacist? And he goes, and he turns white like a ghost. Like I kind of blew his spot up. And he goes, how do you know that? And I said, are you going down to Georgia in like a month? And he like looked at me. He goes, Yeah. I go, listen, man, I go, I don't typically talk about readings to people's family when it comes personal, but I was like, I'm going to have to tell your family about this. Cause I'm like, what I see is a violent act against minorities and stuff. And I'm like, and he turns like, why does it go? Starts like freaking out and things like that. And he's like, I don't understand how you know this. Like he's getting all like agitated and stuff. So I take him out and I walk him over. I pull his aunt in. I pretend I'm reading her. I told him I'm not going to say anything. But I sit her down, I go, listen, you have to figure out what you're going to do with your nephew because like, you know, blah, 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 blah. I see all this. And then I see that he has stuff on his computer planned. I guess she goes home, goes on his computer and sees like this elaborate plan, like elaborate plan to like go down to Georgia, meet this guy who's in a white supremacy group and him joining him to start like this violent movement, like a really violent movement. What a like crazy. Yeah. Yeah, it was bizarre. And like, it was weird because the kid, 
was 20 years old. Like he wasn't like a older male. Like he was a young kid. Like he just didn't have anyone around him to be like, come on, man, you got to like straighten up. He was on the computer on the dark web. I saw it too. He's planning all this stuff. And I was like, bro, you got to stop this. Like, this is not cool. And I guess because he never told anyone that it really freaked him out. Like he didn't tell his sister. He didn't tell his aunt. He didn't tell anybody. Like he did not tell anybody. It was really bizarre. So did, so really did he ever, he never went, obviously. They thwarted you know. the situation and, oh you know, thank God. Yeah, yeah they had to. Anything. Yeah, they had to. It was like, it was something a little weird because like once I, because it was weird because how I saw it was creepy to me. So once I saw this stuff around him immediately, like within two minutes, I tapped him. I was like, you've got to come in this room with me right now. And he got weary out because he's like, why is this kid putting me in another room to like, this is supposed to be a group reading or whatever. And then he comes back out and his aunt, his sister, everyone is like, what's going on? Like, why do you look so shaken up right now? Like, and then he didn't, he, I guess he stayed really quiet because I was in the other room talking. So I had no idea. It was really creepy. Well, that's good. That's, that's good crazy. that you thwarted that horrible situation. People are creeps. Now tell me, how does this affect like your personal yeah, relationships? Just gonna are your yeah, friends uh, like, oh, Jonathan, don't, what are you thinking now? You know, or are they like, yeah. you know, creeped out or you know, yeah. or having like, you know, a, a relationship with a partner, like, yeah. tell us about yeah. that. Yeah, like, definitely, when I kept this a secret, like my gift for a very long time. And that when my best friends heard about it, like they're these Italian guys from Long Island, like these, you know, so for them, macho. It, yeah, very. And like, it was interesting, because like, this person in particular, he was my best friend for probably I want to say 17 years. And when he found out, he completely stopped speaking to me, like completely stopped speaking to me. Wow. And, the crazy, yeah, and the craziest part about it, and I, and you know, we've worked past it. So I'm very happy we like kind of worked past it, but I was the best man in his wedding. He kind of removed all the duties from me, gave it to someone else because of this. Like there was a lot of things that like we were going through and like, with like my girlfriends and stuff, like me dating them a long time ago, I caught a girl cheating on me with this. And when, once I found that out, wow. I, was like, I swear, you got to be upfront with these broads, right? When you yeah. get with them, Jonathan, just what I'm saying, because if they're banging someone else, you know, on the side, you know, exactly. Like, God we were forbid. Saying, yeah. Oh my God. It no was bad. We were laying in my bed and I said to her, I go, who's Frankie? And she, turned, and she turned white. She, and I go, why is blah, 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 blah. Do that. I'm like, I typically wouldn't do it, but, it's like coming kind of at me like a ton of bricks. And she also didn't believe in this stuff too. So it made it even more like in her face. And she was like, you know, I met up with my ex-boyfriend last night and his name was Frankie. And then like, I told her, I was like, get out of my, like, you know, you gotta go <laughs> like leave. But it also helps me get like who I'm dating now and stuff. So it, it's been great. Like, I mean, I these mean, girls gotta be on their best woo. behavior. They do. I mean, like, I try not to look at it anymore because, like, I don't want to see anything. Like, I want to go through a relationship how anyone else would. Like, I don't want to have, like, a cheat code or something that someone else doesn't have. And I feel like it's... I think that's like, a little yeah. hard. <laughs> yeah. It just, like, invades can people's privacy. Like, yeah. can you switch it on enough? Can you, like... Or does do things, like, come flying at you? Like, you can't take it down. It's, like, the best way I can explain it, it does. It comes flying at you all the time. But you, you have to learn to ignore it. Because if you don't ignore it, it's legitimately going to take up your entire life. Like, it's going to consume you. It's going to just take up your life. So I've learned to kind of, like, not look at it all the time. Even though it's very hard not to because it's always in my face, I just have to not always be on my A game with it. Like, because no matter what now, no matter where I go, people are like, do you see anything around me? Like, I can't go to a place. I can't go anywhere. People coming up to me being like, so do you see anything around me? And it gets like really annoying. Like now, like at first it was like kind of funny, but now it's like, all right, like let me eat dinner. Let me have a beer. Like leave me alone. <laughs> like, no, of course. Of course. Yeah. Well, we've been home so much. I've really been enjoying Skillshare. You know what? I'm a little obsessed with Skillshare. There's so many great classes on that. I know it's, it's so amazing because it's for creatives. It's a, 
It's just so good. I've been watching Emily Henderson and it's about styling your space. She has great tips and ideas. And this is so perfect while people are home and even when they're not home, it's just very, very inspiring. And you learn so many different things and I'm super obsessed with it. And it's great for everybody who follows our podcast because you can just learn so many different talents and, and, and help your skills, your skill set. Hence the word Skillshare. It's good because as well, at this time, you know, strong community is so essential in times of hardship. And Skillshare is not only like classes, it's an online community so you can connect to fellow creatives. Mm -hmm. and That's true. And have discussions. Um, you can share your passions. It's really great. It's, it's really helping me. I've really enjoyed taking a lot of that classes. <laughs> I know. I know. And I always like learning and, and developing everything that I do. So it's perfect. And I think all of our listeners, we have a special listeners and viewers, I should say, we have a special deal for you. We do. It's two whole months of unlimited access to thousands of classes for free. Explore your creativity and get two free months of premium membership at skillshare.com forward slash caviar. C-A-B-I-A-R. Get started today by heading to skillshare.com forward slash caviar. Skillshare.com. And that's free two free months of unlimited access to thousands of classes at Skillshare.com forward slash caviar. Try it out. It's fabulous. It really is. You can it is. It's really lot. good. Yep. Meet cool people. Yep. Thank you. Have you ever been in a crowded room or in a place where you've seen someone and like you've seen something so crazy that you've had to approach a total stranger? Yeah. Um, I was in Italy <laughs> and um, I was in Italy and I was on a bus on the way back and I turned to this and now this older lady was like probably in her eighties. She's walking a hundred degree weather on her own. So we were on the bus and I felt compelled to tell her something. Uh, so we just sat kind of right next to each other and I told her like your sister, blah, blah, blah is here. And she looked at me and got up and just like left, <laughs> like, and just like left. Like, yeah, like it was, I have had stories like that where like I try to tell people something that like if their son passed away tragically or daughter, I come, I will walk off to them and tell them I get mixed responses. Some people are very open. So once I got those mixed responses, I kind of took a step back. Cause I don't want to invade people's privacy too. Yes. So, Do you feel you're more religious or more spiritual? Good question. I'll say more spiritual, honestly, because now, because since I read like people hold religion to, um, Jewish, Catholic, Hindu, Lutheran, whatever. And they have these really strong beliefs. But for me, reading literally people from all over the world with all different religions, they all come through the same way. So now more of on like a spiritual level than I am like with a religious level. Yeah. Like if you read Jews or Hindus or Muslims yeah. or whatever it is, everybody's coming through the same way. The same way. The yeah. same exact way. There's no difference between a Jew, a Catholic, a Hindu. Like there's literally no difference. And I try to, those people that come to me that are very religious and whatever, I try to explain that to them. Sorry for the yawning. I didn't have any. Oh, like, you are so interesting, but I just. Oh no, my God. No, 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 I get it. I mean, and look at this shitty weather. Oh my God, please don't apologize. Yeah, no, I just try to explain to those really intense religion, religious people that re like religion is not like they're all the same. They're all the same. Well, I that think. makes me feel better because yeah. I feel like yeah. religion, and this is, you know, my opinion, it's supposed to bring people together, but it all yeah. does is separate everybody. Mm -hmm. It does. It's just, it, it, and also from what I've realized, because I've read people that are, you know, involved in the Vatican in Italy. Like I've read all like really religious people to really spiritual people. Like the religious people are very um, like buttoned up, black and white, like, you know, analytical and like, they're very, they're very hard on people, I've realized, or just harder. They have, like, a certain expectation with, like, how you should be living your life and how, you know, you have to follow this guideline, which is cool, and I, I get it. And then you have, the, like, the spiritual people that are very open-ended, whatever comes, comes. And I, try to, and I try to tell them, like, even though you're both, like, completely different, your loved ones come through exactly the same. And it's supposed to bring everyone together, not, like, push you guys apart. And then I, whether they take it, I don't know. But I try to just to say that because like they think that their loved ones will come in stronger because they're religious versus someone who's spiritual and they come through the same. So like, that's what I was trying, I was trying to tell them. Exactly. Now you look very young. Yeah. But, so I just want everyone to, you're, you're not only 22. 
No, I'm 28. <laughs> still very young. Only still young. I could have birthed the people. I mean, you have this amazing gift. You have a big life ahead of you. What what do you what do you where do you see yourself in five years? Like what do you want at John John the Mark? Yeah, so like, yeah. So what I, I plan on or what I want is I guess I want to help the masses of people. Like my goal is to kind of go around the country or world and do these big events for like Sloan Kettering, just do an event for them and donate all the proceeds to them. Do people that lost someone in the military and then donate to the wounded warrior project. Like that's kind of what I want to do. It's like get like, um, just a, you know, do these shows and donate and help out as much as I can, like worldwide to people that really need it and that are really suffering. Cause I want to help people that are truly suffering that really need like that closure. I love it. Would you see yourself ever having a show obviously with a charity component? I would. I like, I've been in talks for doing stuff and a big part of it is like at the end of every episode, I want to put a, like a link onto a different charity so people can donate to a certain charity. Like that's kind of, that's what I would like to do is something along the lines like that. I know it's not appealing to most networks and people, but no, it's I something think that after this, passionate. especially it yeah, will be. I think, it, so I think it's, died yeah, alone. I think people died alone. I think, you know, I think yeah. it's going to be much more appealing now. This yeah, club. it's because I've been offered stuff like at a very young age, but it was all like not something that I truly believed in. Like I want to believe in a project. I want to give everything I have to someone. And my biggest goal is just to really help and give closure to people that need it. I know, I know you've worked with. I just want to ask. I mean, we don't yeah. have to shit talk other media. Yeah. I mean, unless we want to. But <laughs> yeah, Teresa Caputo, you like her? Yeah, she's cool. Yep. You feel I, like she does a great thing. I just feel like, you know, whoever the, a medium is um, and they provide like validation and closure to someone, then they're doing their job. And that's a good thing for the people that go to mediums and psychics that do cold readings and stuff. I can't get behind that. I just, I, I can't get behind that because I feel like I hear stories from not only celebrities, but from normal people where they go to these psychics and they're like, you give me two grand, I'll lift a curse off of you. And yeah. What like, kind of bullshit? I had that once. Do you remember? They tried that. that. I didn't give them that. Yeah, like, it's just People so are like, you're cursed. I was like, yeah. no fucking kidding. Okay, yeah. You know, <laughs> have you, I know. She told me I was cursed from the womb. Someone yeah. had a curse on my mother and it came through the yeah, womb. Yeah, she was a real, she was a, she was a real gypsy. Oof. Yeah, yeah, but I feel but, like Teresa does, she makes a lot of people happy. Yes. Just I looking look. at her hair makes me yeah. happy. Yeah. <laughs> so I Yeah. Her, you know. I just, I just can't get behind those, those people. It just, those people irk me when people come to me, they're like, I'm cursed. I paid $1,500 to lift a love curse that I have. I'm like, what are you talking about? And then I read them and they're like, my biggest concern is am I cursed? I'm like, no. I'm like, you're not cursed. I'm like, no. I'm like, you don't have to give someone $1,500 to lift a curse. Do like, you feel anybody's cursed? No, I don't think anyone's cursed. I feel like people kind of choose their own fate and destiny in some type of way. Like, I just feel like if you're a bad person, you're going to do bad things. And I do know sometimes people get caught up in the wrong place in the wrong time. And those, like, I don't know if you're cursed or not, but because I, I don't, I don't know if I believe in curses because like, I feel like you can change your own fate and destiny to do what you want to do. Like, you don't have to stay in a relationship. You can leave, even though sometimes it's tough or you don't have to stay in that career. You can switch. Like, it's just all depending on who you are as a person. Like if you're not comfortable enough to, to leave or switch, I don't think you're cursed. I just think it's difficult for you to leave or something like just leave a situation. You know what happens to me? I'm very big with that. No good deed goes unpunished. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Happens to the margin left see a lot. All the time. I sometimes stick my nose in places I shouldn't or, or have this very impulsive idea that I'm going to help this one or do this yeah. or do that. And then, it bites me in the ass and I get oh, burned and I get bitten very, very hard. Do you ever, do you ever just, you know, I feel like that happens to me a lot and I still want, you know, and I don't lose my faith in humanity or right. anything like that, but I feel like that happens to me a lot. Oh, me too. Me too. I bend over back for people. I do so many good things for people when, you know, they don't ask, I just do. And I do, then they burn me. And then like, they burn me to my face. It's not even like, you know, behind my back. It's like to my face. And I've, what, what I have realized is that I, I believe in karma. I believe like you do good. It, it could take five years, two years, seven years, but it'll eventually come back. 
And that's what I'm hoping, you know, I'm hoping about that karma, but yeah, no, I'm the same way. I feel like for good people that have good intentions and good hearts that happens more often than people that are good people, but have like this insane wall that they're not going to help anyone. Like people that are good people, I guess, but won't overextend themselves. They won't get burned. Like how you and I would, because we want to help and we'll do whatever we can to help. And people just are not the same. Yeah, I would never compromise my personality and my good intentions for anyone else's bad behavior. Like, no, ever. Yeah. Either, that's the way I feel also. No. I feel like no matter how many times I've been knocked down, I don't want to lose my same person. I'll always be the same person. I don't want to lose my faith in humanity. Sometimes I feel like I'm moving forward, I might be a little more cautious. Certain times. Cautious is good. Yeah, I don't, I, you know, to. my husband always says, it's like I meet, you know, someone in the diner. I'm like, come for Thanksgiving. <laughs> you know, <laughs> you know, he's like, Seriously. you know, your life, your life has changed. You're on a TV show. You're this, you know, I never want to think people just want to be around me because, you know, I'm something different than I used to be. I'm like, no, no, no. They really love me, you know, or something like that. But, you know, I don't, you know, I never want to think people want to be around me because I could do something for them or this or that, yeah. you know. And, and that's unfortunate, right? Like, right. Or, or, or you feel like people want it. Use it for something. But I, I never even have that in my head. No. I, I, I never, you, me too. Me too. I never had it in my head until, like, people pretend to be my friend. And then they ask for, like, questions about people passed away and then their loved ones. And then when something happens to them that's good that I tell them, I'm no, like, they don't acknowledge me anymore. I'm, like, nothing to them. You're dead to them. I'm dead to them. So up until that point, they're calling me every day, texting me, you know, freaking out. And I'm answering them when I, when I have stuff going on. And then when I tell them something's going to happen, that's positive, And it happens in that time frame, I'm done. Like they don't even speak to me. I'm until something bad happens to them. Then I'm like, Oh my God, like, you know, things were busy. It's like, not really. Like I see you on social media, like not really. So it's, I, it's, it's, it's like the same thing. Like, it just bothers me now. So like, that's why now I'm being also a little bit more cautious with who I overextend myself to with like, I guess my gift, because it does take a lot out of me to read someone. It's not like I'm going, I'm going, and then I could run a marathon. It's like when I'm done reading, I'm drenched in sweat. Like, you know, I'm exhausted. So people don't get that either. So yeah, it's, it mm -hmm. is, it's, it's, I'm sure it's how many people could you do in a day? I try to cap myself at the most three, but I'll do two just because I want to give them like legit everything I have. So like I'll go until I can't go anymore with them. I typically do like 45 minutes, but I'm on with them for like an hour, an hour and 15 because I don't want them to not get exactly what they want, like in with detail, with situation. So I try, I just cap myself off at two for like an hour and 15 minutes each person. Yeah, because it's it's draining. It's, you it's, know, it's a job. Yeah. People don't, you know, people think it's just like, oh, he could do it. You know, it's it's work. Yeah. It's, yeah, it's coming through you. It. it takes it out of you. Yeah, they don't get it. They have no idea. They're like, all right, so you want to read this person, this person? And I'm like, no, like I'm tired. I just read like three, four people. Like I'm done. Like it's hard for me. It's hard. And it was funny because when you were reading me, like obviously my family's English and you yeah. were like, Ooh, it's like, do people come through with accents too? So they like, do. or different languages? They do. Like when I read people from like Brazil or like Hong Kong and stuff, like they come through with like a different language and an accent. So I know that they're not from like America because like that I, it's all I know is American stuff because that's where I grew up. And, but when I read someone that is from America, but their brother, sister, aunt, uncle, what, whatever, is from Hong Kong or is from Britain or is from Brazil, they come through with a heavy accent and they put like a Spanish word or a Chinese word so I know where they're from, like, or I know what region they're from. I may not know exactly where, but I'll know kind of. And then I, and then they kind of translate it back into English for me and stuff. That's good. Just for validation stuff. Yeah. That's crazy. great. That is so crazy. crazy. I love it. I absolutely love it. Well, thank you so much for coming on today. Thank I think you. you've enlightened us so much yeah. to the world of mediums and you're adorable. And I want people to find you and I want people to follow you and, thank you. and you, you bring so much good and joy into the world. So Jonathan, tell everybody where to find you. Um, on Instagram, it's just Jonathan Mark Medium. And then my website is jonathanmark.net. Super easy. 
Yeah, jonathanmark.net, Jonathan Mark Medium on Instagram. You're going to see him on the hills. Um, he's definitely someone to follow, someone to book. He's unbelievable. Um, his information will be on our website. All right, so thank you so, so much. Thank right, you. Thank you. Thanks, Bye. So, and good, we'll to you. good to see you. Yeah, Bye, baby. Bye. 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 I love him so much. I love him. Was he not great? Bella, was he great? Did you feel like, was anybody coming through, like your ancestors? <gasps> we should really get Bella Barita because we don't know where she came from because she's a rescue. It's true, Bella. We might be able to decide no, who the best. No, can I just say something? He knew things that were so crazy. I, but I feel like we learned the difference between a psychic and a medium. Yeah, that was really, because I, I didn't know, I mm -hmm. still don't always understand, like, the difference between people who read tarot cards and all that stuff, so it was good to have that clarified. Yes, and he's so on point. That's what's so amazing. And he has great stories, and he's interesting. But when you read George, just want you people know he doesn't look you in the face. He looks uh -huh. down because the, the people are coming through to him. So it's so interesting. Um, I've been very fortunate. I haven't had a lot of people die in my life. I've, my grandparents, my um, in-laws, RIP, the, the Josephs, who I love so much. So I've only, I haven't had a ton of people pass away. So the people who came through. So yeah. it was just, it was so fabulous. And yeah. it's so interesting. It's so interesting. And for me, it was really overwhelming and unbelievable because I didn't have closure with my father and I do have a lot of people that died so and it was extenuating strange circumstances so it really gave me a sense of like calm and uh, like a sense of like satisfaction I could put a lot of things but he was amazing he was he and really was you amazing. know what just eased my conscience about all religions everybody comes yeah. through the same you know what at the end of the day we're all the same yeah. Even though religion is like everyone thinks this one's right, that one's right, this one has an opinion. No, that? we all come well, in the same way and we, we all go out the same exactly. way. Exactly. We all come out of the JJ. That's right. We all die. That's and it. And you know what? Whatever whatever your beliefs are. Yeah. Be whatever. Kind. Be kind. You know, the afterlife. Not to mention, I don't think, uh, on a side note, I don't think I'd want to date or be banging a medium. No. You know, <gasps> us girls. Us peeps, we got our secrets. Could you imagine someone know what you're thinking all the time? No, because imagine you're fantasizing and they know they're like, hey, what are you thinking about that for? <laughs> Turn that one down. Turn that one down. That I, I would be so free. I'd be like, don't think it. Don't think it. Keep, keep it clean. Keep it clean, Margie. Oh, I can't do that. No. I don't want anybody to know what I'm thinking. Thank God. Sometimes I think she's psychic. She's looking at me funny. She's looking at you, you know funny. what I'm thinking? If you know, well, caviar dreamers. Yes. I hope you enjoyed that because you know what? We'd like to. See all different disruptors, leaders in the industry, and you know what? I'm bringing you something different. Bring and you it. can book him online. He book him online. Have to be in person, so you can go on the website, and he doesn't see. But both of us over video. And over video. I mean, I had so a towel on my head. I was fresh out of the shower. I wanted him to get the real Marge. <laughs> the real Margaret. Josephs. The real Margaret Josephs. As opposed to Gypsy Rose Lee. Margaret Gypsy Rose Lee. Gypsy Rose Lee. Like that, I dress up for him because you know what. Why not? Gypsies, tramps, and thieves. I love it. This is a good thing. This is a good thing for the Maj. And you know, no one wants to really see my hair looking shitty in bad weather. Okay. So, Caviar Dreamers, keep dreaming. Keep dreaming, guys. And you can find us at Caviar Dreams, Tuna Fish Budget. Also now on YouTube. So, video yes. episodes twice a week, Wednesday and Friday. So I mean, don't you want to freaking look. see us? I mean, do you just want to hear our annoying voices? Because I know everyone says, my voice can cause a seizure. And Lexi's annoying as fuck. <laughs> annoying as fuck. So, why not just look at us and get annoyed? We love you guys. Love you. Thanks, Caviar Dreamers. Bye.